Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem find all anagrams in a string. And to be honest, the description of this problem is a little bit incomplete. So let me just explain it myself. So first of all, an anagram is basically to say that two strings are anagrams of each other if they have the exact same count of each character. For example, a string ABC is an anagram of the string CAB because they each have one C, one A, and one B. Now, if I add an A to this string and I add an A to this string, there are still anagrams. Now they have two A's, one B and one C each. So the counts are what determine if two strings are anagrams or not. In this problem, we're given two strings S and P, and we want to know, basically we want to look at every single starting position in the string S, so like this one, or this one, or literally any position in the string. We know that P is of length three, so we want to know, starting at index zero, looking at the first three characters, is this an anagram of the string P? Yes or no. If it is, we add the index zero to our output array. Our output in this case is going to be a list. So in this case, these two strings are anagrams of each other. They each have one A, one B, and one C. So we add the value zero to our output result. And we do that for every single starting position. So next string we're going to look at is B A E, which is not an anagram of this string. So we don't add anything to the output. And we're going to do that uh, for every single position in the string. And we're going to realize that there's no more anagrams except for one more position, which is over here. And this is starting at index six. So we're going to add index six to our output. So this is going to be the resulting array. So basically, we're just finding all substrings in S that are anagrams of the string P and adding those starting positions to our output. So at first, it might not seem like this problem can be solved efficiently. You might find that, you know, this is the best time complexity you can get, S times P, the length of the two strings multiplied together. But actually, there is a way to get a time complexity of big O of S, and it's kind of, it might not be obvious to you, but it's actually simple once you understand it. So let's try to understand that. Okay, so first things first, we know that we have to be able to determine if a substring like this one is an anagram of the string P. We know that the count is going to be the best way to do that. So what data structure are we going to use? Well, we're going to use a hash map to represent the count. So we're going to need one hash map, let's call it P count, to basically count uh, the occurrences of each character. In this case, we have one A, and we have one B, and we have one C. And of course, we're going to maintain a similar thing for every substring that we look at in the string S. It's also going to be a hash map counting the occurrences of each character. But now for the actual algorithm. The simplest way that you might think of is first look at the first three characters, uh, count all, all the occurrences of them, figure out if it's equal to P. Uh, then do the exact same thing for the next three characters, and then do the next uh, same thing next three characters, etc., etc. One of the things that you might notice with this technique is we're doing a lot of repeated work, aren't we? If we already counted the first three characters here, and then we want to count the first three characters over here, isn't it the exact same as what we just did? The only difference is we're removing this character and adding this character. And then after that, when we want to look at the next three characters, again, we're doing the same thing. We're just removing this character and adding this character to our S count hash map. So this technique is called sliding window. We're going to have two pointers, uh, one at the beginning and one at the end of our substring. We're going to shift both pointers to the right. And as we shift the right pointer, we're going to add this new character to our hash map and we're going to remove this character from our hash map. So, okay, with this sliding te uh, window technique, uh, you know, counting the characters in each substring is not going to be too bad. Uh, clearly, as we, you know, iterate each pointer, we're doing an O of one operation. As we do that through the entire string, the time complexity of the sliding window is going to be big O of, let's say, S, which is going to be the size of this string. The other thing that you might be wondering is, well, how are we going to determine if these two hash maps are equal to each other? We'd have to use a loop to do that, right? So what's the time complexity going to be to do that? It must be the size of the P string, right? In the worst case. And you're technically right. It could be the size of the P string, but how big could the P string be? 
And remember, we're not only just looking at the characters themselves to determine if two hash maps are equal, we're looking at the unique characters that exist in the string P. So not actually the size of P, the unique characters of P. And actually, uh, in the description of the problem, we're told that it's going to be limited to lowercase a through z. So if we really want to compare two hash maps, in this case, to check if they're equal, the worst case is it's going to be a, tw a big O of 26 operation because that's how many lowercase English characters exist. Exist. So with all that said, you can probably figure out the rest of this problem. It's actually not too bad. I'll go through this example just to kind of give you an idea. So initially, we're going to have this as our window. The counts of each character, A, B, C, are going to be one each. And when we compare these hash maps, uh, you know, to our result, we're now going to add zero because that's where our left pointer happens to be. Now, as we shift our pointers, we're going to remove the C from our hash map. So now C is actually going to be down to zero. And when we actually get to a count of zero, we're actually going to pop the element from the hash map, but I'm just not going to show that right now. Uh, we're also going to add a new character E in this case. Uh, so now we see that the hash maps are not equal and we're going to keep doing this and we're going to keep finding that we're not going to have any windows that are exactly equal to P until we get to a point where our right pointer is over here and our left pointer is all the way over here. And by then you can probably tell that this is what's going to be in our hash map. We're going to have exactly one A and one B. Uh, this E will have been popped down here. Uh, you know, after we have been done with that E, it would have been popped and then we would have added another C so that our hash maps would have been equal again. So then we'd add six to the output because that's where our left pointer happens to be. You know, I could, I could spend more time on this example, but I think you probably get the idea now so we can actually jump into the code. Okay, so now let's code it up. One edge case I actually didn't talk about is what if the length of our P string is even bigger than our S string? Then there, it's not even possible for there to be an anagram in the string S. Uh, so then in this case, we could actually just return uh, immediately and what we would return is an empty list because there's no anagrams in the string s other than that we are going to use our hash maps our p count and our s count hash maps now a lot of people in python use a data structure called a counter a counter is just a wrapper around like a hash map or a dictionary which i'm going to use and i'm going to use it because it's kind of cheating in this case to use a counter because it really does most of the work for you and i feel like in most cases it wouldn't be allowed in an interview View, but if you want to use a counter, you can feel free to do so. So what we're going to do here is just go through every character in the string P and add it to the P count. So we're going to go uh, at index I, we're going to get the character in the string P and we're going to add one to that in our hash map. Now, if this character has not already been inserted in our hash map, then we're going to get an error if we try to index it just like this. You know, if if there's if that key does not exist in our hash map, we get an error. But one way to get around that in Python is to use the get function for a hash map, which if this key does not already exist, we can return a default value. In this case, I'm going to return a default value of zero. So we're going to actually do the exact same thing simultaneously with the S count hash map. Let's say the size of P is three. Then at the same time, we're going to initialize the first three characters of s in our s count hash map and we're going to do it pretty much the exact same way as you can see down below just getting the characters from the s string so now at the very least we have our our sliding window initialized we can set the result if these two hash maps are equal we're going to want to set our hash map equal or our result equal to an empty to a string of zero if the two hash maps are equal, we're going to want to assign our result to a list with zero inserted because the first substring uh, starts at zero, of course, and that's if s count is equal to p count. Now, in some languages, you might not be able to directly compare two hash maps, so you could use a loop to do that. But in this case, we can. Uh, if they're not equal, we're just going to assign the result to an empty string rather than a string with index zero. Now, let's initialize our left pointer to be zero. And our right pointer itself is going to actually iterate through every index in the S string, except we're not going to be starting at zero. We're actually going to be starting at uh, the length of P because we already compared the first substring and we want to start looking at characters after uh, the length of P, right? And it's going to go all the way up until the end of the S string. 
Uh, instead of calling this I, I'm actually gonna call it R because it's a right pointer. So to our S count, we're gonna be adding the character at index R to our hash map. We're gonna be incrementing the count of it by one, but that character might not already exist in our hash map in that case we can do the same thing we did up above. So at S at index R, uh, get a default value of zero. And at the same time, the, our left pointer is not gonna be incremented by itself. We're gonna have to do that ourselves. But before we increment the left pointer, we want to remove the character that was at the left index. So we can do that just like this. And after we're done with that, we can increment our left pointer. But one thing we don't wanna to forget to do is if the count of that character ended up being zero, we want to remove it from our hash map. So we can do a simple if statement to determine that. And thinking of that actually reminds me we should put the increment operation uh, after this so that we can actually check if it was decremented down to zero. If it was, we can pop this value from our hash map. This is important because when we're comparing two uh, hash maps, if one of them has a value of count zero, it might not uh, evaluate to true. So that's why we're doing this. And then after we have done that, we do want to increment left. And lastly, we want to check now, finally, are the two hash maps actually equal? If they are, then we are going to uh, append to our list the beginning of the substring that you know that is here, and that substring begins at the left pointer, which we have. So we can append the left pointer value to the result. That's the entire function code for this loop, actually. So now the only thing left for us to do is go ahead and return the result and make sure that this code does work. So as you can see on the left, yes, it does work and it's pretty efficient. It seems kind of complicated, but I think that's just because we have a lot of boilerplate, like initializing the data structures and things like that. But hopefully it's not too bad. I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.